Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Got Mental Health Podcast. I am your co-host, Rachel Cove. I am a multi-passionate entrepreneur, author, artist, mother, and certified recovery coach. I'm your co-host, Arthur Mogilevsky, entrepreneur, girl dad, animal activist, and owner of AM Healthcare, a premier substance abuse and mental health treatment program. With the collective experience of 21 years working in the mental health field, we are excited to bring to you a safe and fun place to talk all things mental health. We will be interviewing experts, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and professionals in the entertainment industry to better educate, inform, and inspire our community to have positive mental wealth. Welcome back, everyone, to the Got Mental Health podcast. I am your co-host, Rachel Cove, along with my other co-host, Arthur Mogulewski. Mogulewski, Rachel. Doesn't matter. <laughs> On the show today, we have Manuel Ferreira, who is a French-born pornographic actor, director, and producer who has been in the adult entertainment industry for over two decades. He has appeared in over 1,800 adult films and has won numerous awards for his performances, including 14 AVN awards. He is a father, he is a husband, and I know him through jiu-jitsu, so he is a purple belt now in jiu-jitsu, correct? That's correct. Very exciting. Welcome to the show, Manny. Welcome. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah. So I want to start off with this question because I read online that you were going to be a PE teacher when you were younger. How did you go from being a PE teacher to working in porn? So it's a funny story, actually, because I was um, I just finished my first year in college, believe it or not, in France to be a PE teacher, you have four years of college. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. very complex. So you couldn't just work at McDonald's and then, you know, get <laughs> yeah. hired by your high school. Or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so um, I was I was a very sexual young adult. And it's funny because my best friends, they used to give me the name of a very well-known European porn star named Rocco C. Freddy when I was younger, way before I was in the adult industry mm -hmm. because I was very active. And then one day uh, we were doing a birthday card for my best friend's brother where we bought an adult magazine and we cut off the girls while they were doing the act and we replaced their head. That was way before you could do easy Photoshop and all that. So mm -hmm. we would do, we would cut the picture and replace the woman's face by our friend's face. <laughs> and in this magazine, uh, there was a casting call. And my best friend was like, dude, this is for you. Like, like there's nothing, there's no one else that's more men to do this than you. <laughs> and what's weird is I was like, a, I wasn't shy, but I wasn't the guy that would be um, very comfortable with nudity in front of other people, mm. right? I was very, uh, like, for example, I grew up doing judo. I would wait at the end for everyone to go to the shower and be done for me to go last. Wow, interesting. Always. And... Um, and I was like, I don't know. I want to be a teacher. Imagine if, if I do this, that could ruin what I'm trying to do right now. And he dared me. And because I was an idiot when I was younger, I say, how dare you dare me? And I answered that casting call. I went to it. Uh, I was picked by the people. The ca so entering the casting meant sending a letter, introducing yourself, sending a picture dressed of yourself, and then they will call a selection of guys through, you know. And they told me they had thousands of guys, and out of uh, that thousand, they picked between 40 and 50 guys to show up on the same day. And we all went through a little casting in an office with two girls from the industry asking us questions. It was like, Silly questions like, what's your fantasy? What would you do if you, you know, if you were picked? Blah, 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 blah. And out of all those guys, they had to pick five guys. And out of the five guys, I was uh, the only one that was actually able to do the job. Wow. And after that, they were like, hey, you can do this. Let's, uh, let's bring you back for other things. 
And in the beginning, I just wanted to do like very like, I was refusing all uh, big production. I wanted to do more like small, smaller production. And I thought, hey, I, I still lived at my parents' place. And I thought maybe I can make some extra money while being in school doing that for a couple of years. So when you're in the audition process, is it yes. I'm auditioning by having sex with someone? Is there like dick measuring? Like, no, what no, does no, that no. look like? No, no, really. They were like, so for that specific casting, because that's so many guys to review, they didn't put anyone naked during the casting, during the interview. There was mm. really questions about like, what do you like in sex? What's your fantasy? What, you know, but then... And I'll always remember that was the most awkward things I've, uh, thing I've ever I done in imagine. my life. They, after everyone went to the interview, they lined us up in a corridor. And one of the girls was like, all right, guys, uh, enough with the question. Take pull off your, your pants. Thing, wow. Pull your thing out and let's see what you guys have. Jesus. Wow. And uh, I was like, no way. Like, like. How who was the I one guy that had a hard on? I, I want to know Manny. who that guy was. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> did you got Did you have a hard on, man? I, <laughs> I was so nervous, but so turned on by these two girls that I did. But oh wow, that's funny. Before that, I was the last one dropping my pants. I literally waited because they walked by, and that casting, the the whole point of that casting was to make it a movie the whole casting and after doing the scene they, they made it a movie oh, wow. that was released as a movie so there's that scene where the girl says that and then all the guys pull their pants down and i'm literally the last one to do it and i waited for the girls to be at my level to finally drop it and they both smiled at me i was like all right, all right. You know? <laughs> and then they walked by i put it back up you know and all those guys were like uh, keeping their pens down some of them were like trying to keep it up or like to get it up you know not even to keep it up they were trying to get it up and failed and um after that they had to pick five guys and i was the first guy they picked what well, what was it like filming like because th th there's a difference between having sex with mm -hmm. another party whether it be a male or female in private and then behind a studio full of camera guys a director producers whatever what like what was that experience for you your first time if it, you it was uh, yeah it was weird because i was so nervous but so turned on mm. and until i got in front of the camera all these people around like it seemed to me like something like should i leave like i was thinking should i leave now it's not too late for me to say, you know what, that's not for me, mm. and get out. And then the moment I got in front of the camera, I was with the these two women, and it was also my first time doing it with two women at the same time. And I, all of a sudden, I had, and I think then it became a strength for me, I went full tunnel vision, where all of a sudden, these two ladies were the only thing that existed mm -hmm. and no one else was here, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so I didn't last very long. <laughs> it was my first time like this and with two girls. Yeah. And what's funny is before me, because each guy will go one after the other, I was the fourth guy to go. And three guys before me failed. So when I went in and the director sees finally that I'm good that I'm actually getting hard, yeah. staying hard. Uh, he's like, I can tell he was happy because otherwise he wouldn't have a movie at all. And uh, because I came early, uh, the guy was like, oh, man. And he's like, do you think you could, you know, do more? I'm like, uh, let me go wash up. I'll come back and let's see, you know, if I can, you know. That's I, I, again. I, I really want, you know. There's this, there's, uh, and I would love for you to talk about this, right? With this, the the misconception that like, when you're a porn star, you're not shooting in one consecutive shot the entire film, right? Or is that the case? Like, is it? So, 
uh, some people do, some people don't. The majority of people like to keep the scene going. Got it. Because it keeps it keeps it like more real and more in the moment. Right. You know. Uh, some people they film it in a way where they have a lot of cuts and they reposition and they redo the light, but it's more like an old school way to do it. Most people like to keep the sex scene going and and get the the more real angle of it. So you, I mean, you've been how long have you been uh, acting for? Or this how long is my twenty sixth year, actually. Uh, in two days exactly, it will be 26 years wow. that I'm in the adult industry. Congratulations. Ah, thanks. Um, so the, the follow-up question to that is, so you've, I mean, I look at it as like, as an art form, right? So it's it's a process. I mean, well, it sounds like you don't agree with me. <laughs> but, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I mean, some people see it like that. I mean, I, I, it's a, I a performance of, of some kind. Yeah, okay. it is a performance. Right. 100%. Right. So it's uh, let's classify as a performance of some kind, right? But it's a it's a performance of a sexual act, right? And so, like, yeah. and I'm sure we're going to dive into this a little bit later, but, you know, the relationship that you have from a sexual standpoint with your, let's say, your wife, your partner, in, in comparison to, let's say, these fellow actors within these scenes, right, it's... I've, I've, is there a differentiation between that, right? Where, or do you feel like you have to create those emotional connections with your fellow actor in the scene? Like, what does that look like for you? And how do you differentiate that between, you know what I'm, do you understand what the question I'm getting yeah, to? Totally, okay. totally. Yeah. Um, so for me to be able to do it the way I do, it has to be real, right? So in the moment, uh, all my focus is into the my uh, scene partner, and I make it I make it like a real thing. Of course, there isn't the the love and the the emotions I have for my wife into it, but sure. I try to get as close to it during the scene. Doesn't mean that before it's gonna be like that or after, like you know. Um, I, I've always been, you know, we're all different, and I've always been able to separate the the the, the sex the sex side and the emotional side, right? Mm. So um, I try to make it as real as possible, but of course, it's never as real as when I with my wife. Do you feel that it's more challenging for the female performers to separate the emotions and the sex? I really think that it's more like a, a person thing than a male or female, right? Mm. Like, uh, it's really more how you are yourself. Uh, I know plenty of women that can completely be detached and plenty of men. And then I've known others that sometimes don't make the difference like it sometimes the, the my success in the industry is that I, I always made it real and met my scene partner I always try to make them feel feel special mm. but sometimes when the scene end in the past I've had you know uh, moments where the girls thought like it was real. It was going to keep going right, right. Mm. after the scene. Yeah, that's interesting because I do feel like in 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 real life it is harder for women to detach from sex. I think a lot of the time women need emotions, need connection to create a successful sexual experience. Um, so I was just curious about that in relationship to like your your job. You can you tell us what your normal experience is like arriving to set what do you do can you can you walk us through that like what happens on a porn set so uh strictly as a male performer because i have my production company so when i do my own production it's a little different mm -hmm. but when it's only as a performer i basically show up usually the women show up way before the men because they have to go through makeup they have to do some type of pictures um and then the men shows up and depending on like some movies they have like dialogue which i always find silly but 
Mm -hmm. uh, some people love the dialogue part and want that to build uh, 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 the excitement of when the sex arrive. And some others don't. So some others will do just like a little strip tease of the girl and then the guy comes in and then the sex part starts. Interesting. Uh, so like, regarding the yeah. dialogue, is is there a script that's written for dialogue or is a lot of it improvised? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when there is dialogue, usually it's a script that's written. It's uh, if it's if it's just an individual scene, it's going to be like a quill, quick little setup for a scene. Or sometimes they make a movie with an actual story. So, you know, it'll be a little more than that. So you have so you've transitioned from being an actor to having your own production company what 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 does that transition look ha, been like for you in the sense so almost instantly when i arrived uh, in la because i started in europe 26 years ago mm -hmm. and then i came uh, to la 21 years ago mm. uh, so i was already experienced when i came to la and uh it, it, it's I, I was already thinking okay I love being a performer, but also I want to do more business and I want to be able to do the things exactly the way I like it. Because when it's not your production, you, you, you're not forced to do anything in the industry, but you have to, you have guidelines you have to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still a movie. It's still, you know, um, so I wanted to do things my way and turn it into a bigger profit than just being a performer. Mm -hmm. Um, I came to LA, I became very successful very quickly as a performer. And so a big production company uh, offered me a deal. And when they offered me that deal, I told them like, the idea I want to be like the other people they had who would get a budget to shoot a movie and they were getting a flat fee. I told them, listen, I want to make my own movies. I want to uh, use my own money and produce the movie myself and you guys distribute my movies. I want to keep ownership of those movies. Mm. It's very important for me. And they were like, okay, we usually don't do this, but my name like became really big very quickly and they wanted my name associated to their brand. Mm. And so they agreed. And so I made that deal and um, I've always worked like this ever since. Even though I changed distribution company, I always wanted to own my products and keep making money to this day. There, there are movies I shot in 2003 that are still bringing me money from royalties. You know. Good question about that, right? So how, how do... Because now my business cap is on, right? So <laughs> from a fascination standpoint of, let's say, porn sites and... and I remember when I was a kid, I, my uncle would be burning CDs of videos and stuff <laughs> like that. And I'd f fucking go in there and start stealing them and watching them and all that other stupid shit, right? And so... Or VHSs. Or VH, well, not that. that. That's my generation. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the VHS. I, I saw VHS but, I mean, it, I, it wasn't that high quality. It was like static. I, I couldn't get off to it. But um, no, but now you have the integration of you know, the, the porn hubs, the like the big conglomerates that are putting out short clips, um, you know, whatever it is. Like, how did that integrate with like, I don't see like the the hour and a half long movies that used to exist back in the day. Like, yes. I mean, when you look at it, not only we spawned, but we we became a clip generation, right? It's right. all about clipping. It's all about short clips and you know, uh, not movies that much. So it's a lot more singular scenes that are shot now, which are going to be like between probably 25 and 30 minutes instead of like back in the days when there was five scenes in a movie that would be like two and a half hours. Right, it's like a whole storyline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, um, it, it, but it worked like that for everything, right? Even sure, for, sure. you know, when you do a podcast, you're going to, you, you're going to have the length of the podcast, but I'm sure you're going to get a bunch of clips of the best parts and put them out there, right? And that's what you find more now in like Pornhub or other platform of that type. You rarely get the full, full video at the highest quality, but that generates traffic 
and that traffic, if you can redirect it towards the pay website, you'll make. So your production company has like, I'm assuming like contracts with companies like Pornhub where- So now, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, originally it was, uh, they were just like YouTube, which were like, hey, here's a platform. You can upload whatever you want. Right. And there was not such a big moderation. Um, so at first it hurt the industry like great. Crazy. Right? Mm. Because people would just, grab your movie and just rip it off and upload it. And well, why? so now I want to go, I mean, yeah. I have a lot of questions for you, Manny, so we're probably going to have to get you back on here again. <laughs> but Anytime. the you were talking about technology and the evolution of, let's say, the porn industry. Like, wh what are the fears or the integrations that you're looking at with AI and virtual, like, the Oculus and, like, where people don't need to, a screen and a keyboard and a mouse, now they can be immersed into the actual scene itself. Look, let, let's be honest. VR glasses exist for a long time already now. Mm -hmm. And how many people do you really know that uses VR glasses? Um, That's so true, you, actually. For yeah, this? You know. I mean, I no, just in general. Not only for this. Yeah, but, general, but like, Apple like hasn't come out with one yet. But they're $4,000. Yeah, 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 but exactly. until they're not. They're, yeah, they're going to be. Well, but look, right now you can buy an Oculus Rift for 200 bucks. Right. But still to this day, like how many people do you know that have Oculus Rift at home? And then out of those people, how many are going to use this to watch porn? Like it's not a market that is like that good right now and that great. And that's why there, there isn't like mm. a lot of big companies that get involved in that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, I really feel like if they wanted to kill it uh, on the VR market and the future, they should give those for free. They should just hand them out. Give them for free, and then yeah. everyone everyone's gonna then flood. Will, yeah, will go in it, you know. But to this day, it's not it's not there yet. Plus, the content on VR, like I never understood why people would shoot VR to just shoot POVs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because to me, having the possibility to have the head movement, I want to see things all around me and not just in front of me. If I turn right and there is a TV, if I turn left and there is a plant, why would I ever look around again? Mm. And why would I want VR for this? Mm. You know, it wouldn't, you know, it's more like you're more in it, but it's not going to do anything. Like, yeah. Uh, I kind of feel the same way like about 3D movies. Like when I go see a 3D movie, I know it's different than porn, but like I, I don't, I'm, I go to the movies to escape. I don't go to the movies to be a part of the movie. I go to the movie to escape, but it might be different with porn. I don't know. I, 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 I think we're undervaluing the direction of where this is going and how much they are not only, because you have to ask the question like how much, of, what percentage of it is physical? What percentage of it is mental? right mental stimulation compared to physical stimulation and then at the same time like how they're not there yet i agree with you many 100 percent. but like within the next five to ten years as these products become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and they're going to figure out ways not for the porn industry but just in other experiences in, general, yeah. in life right it's just going to integrate with the porn industry but anyways that's a whole different conversation yeah uh, we're, we're far from it yeah honestly. um so you you're you're married. You have how many you have children? Four, four children. Four children. Girls, yeah. boys. Three boys, one girl. Ah, Mazel Tov. Um, how did you, can you talk to us a little bit about your integration with your relationship with your partner, or like what that looked like, and blending the two worlds? And so you know. the the truth is, outside of what we do in the industry, we don't obviously mix it up ever. Uh, my wife, she has a production company and she makes awesome, actually, uh, porn with real dialogue and very movie-like type thing. Mm. But when we're at home, we're not these people anymore. When mm. we're at home, we're parents and uh, we live a fairly normal life with, a, you know, odd work, odd job, but like not. Like, if you come to my house, you would never know what we do. If you don't know, yeah. you could never tell what I do. We live in, you know, uh, a very nice place. We, we have animals. We have, you know, the kids all around, and they all get along. And, you know, a, a 
my oldest one obviously knows what I do now. Yeah. Uh, we had that talk. What was that conversation like for the so both of you? I, uh, I never lied to my kid, right? So, Love for that. example, when, they, when he was like Adam that Rachel knows, when he was six, seven years old, he would ask me what I do for work. So it would have been dumb for me to say, hey, I make porn or adult movies and it's sex in front of a camera. So, because he, first of all, it's way too young, no sense of sexuality and why. So I told him that I was making movies only for adults, right? Mm. At that age, movies for adults, what does it mean? It's either scary movies or movies with bad words, right? Like in the child mm -hmm. mind. Then as he grew a little older, I explained to him that in my movies, there was sometimes naked people and a little later, sometimes daddy was also naked in the movie. And then I remember when he was about 13, he went to a sleepover at one of his friend's house and his friend's older brother, who was a young teenager, he was probably 15, 16, thought it was a good idea to mention Pornhub in front of the 13 year old. So he came home, asked me uh, what Pornhub was. So I explained to him and he's like, oh, so it's for your movies. So because I never lied and because I did it progressively, he understood what I was doing. And when I explained to him, he was okay with it. I had a discussion later. One time he was in my car. He was about 14. And I told him, Adam, we never talked about, you know, what I do and how you feel about it. And I almost cried when he did that. He told me, he took an example, his best friend. One of his best friend's uh, dad is a, 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 an actor and he did, does very well, did a lot of TV shows, and but he travels a lot because of his work. So he's not, his parents are separated, uh, but he doesn't see his dad as often, you know, as he would like to. And my son was, uh, told me, look, you take us to school, you pick us up, you, play with us, you do sports with us, you're here with us. I'd rather have a dad that does your job but spend the time you spend with us than having a, uh, a dad that does another job but doesn't ever spend time with me. Mm -hmm. That's Makes beautiful. That is beautiful. You know. Your kid's the shit. He's, I mean, you, 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 I honestly, I, I didn't know you were – in the adult industry, again, I think like everything you just said is so real. Like I, I didn't know until we were following each other on Instagram because of related to jujitsu. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just to pivot a little bit. I'm curious. I read this statistic, and it said that 40 million U.S. adults regularly visit internet pornography websites, and 35 percent of internet downloads are pornographic. Why do you think people love porn so much? Well, there, there are different reasons. I think that most people are not like like sexually active the way they wish they were. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. You know, like uh, we, I, I think there's a vast majority of men and, and women, because there are a lot of women that watch that watch porn, that are not as active as they wish they were. Um, there is also the fantasy, you know, like uh, you can be married and be sexually active. But for example, you wish you could have anal sex with your wife, but that's not her thing. So you don't want to be the guy that pushed for it. But that's your fantasy. So maybe you're going to watch something with uh, scenes with anal and get off of this, right? Or for any of any niche you into would work, right? Um, it's so many a lot reasons, of reasons, you know, for yeah. people to I think watch it, porn, but yeah, like, you know, yeah, go ahead. Rachel. No, I was just going to say, I think it's, 
I know it's a controversial thing to say, but I think porn is really helpful for some people. I think some people have a really difficult time getting aroused and I think they have they they are not in relationships where they're satisfied and they can't openly talk about fantasies. So they go and have their fantasies on the side. I think it's one thing to do that, um, you know, every day, but then it's one thing there are people that can become porn addicts and watch it ten times a day, right? So yeah. I mean, I, I well, think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Arthur. Sorry. No, I, I, I think it's, there's a balance, mm -hmm. right? And I think, you know, many, I mean, obviously, you know, Rachel, uh, both of us are in the space of mental health. And uh, I, I personally, in mental health and substance abuse, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, mm -hmm. and uh, we work with clients that have sex addictions, uh, relationship uh, issues, gambling addictions, all sorts of types of things, right? And so, Yes, there is part of it where it's like, I agree, if they are not able to get whatever they're looking for in their personal life, they, they look for that answer within the, the, the porn world. But I also think it can be used as an unhealthy escape as well. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, my question... You know, my question to you, because I know the therapeutic answer is I'm really fascinated you as an actor and as a performer and, and producer and all the other things like the professional within the space. Like, how do you see porn affecting the society and how can one balance that with also having a healthy relationship with their partner? Because I don't want it to be used to say like, we'll go watch porn and escape into your own world and then leave behind the reality that you have, mm. right? Because that's not healthy. Yeah. Uh, and that's happening to a lot of people, right? Because mm. uh, I feel like there's, because there's a level of fantasy. Your fantasies keep going higher and higher and higher once you've kind of fit that need. And that's that dopamine rush that you get with drugs. It's the same thing. Like you need more and more and more and more and more as you progress. Like w w as a professional in the space, like what, what are your thoughts about that? So like a lot of people that have addiction, I feel like the, the, I don't know if sometimes my English is limited. I don't know if I should no, say please. the problem comes from something deeper, right? Right. It's not just uh, um, the porn thing and like. <sighs> sorry, sometimes it's hard for me to, you know. Say uh, it in French. We'll translate it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, some, how to say that? Like. It's important to know, like, obviously, ev uh, first of all, to, to talk about addiction to porn, for example, to me, it comes also if it has a negative effect in your, in your personal life, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I watch a lot of porn. To this day, I still do watch porn. I have a but, ton of bunch of questions about that afterwards. Right, but <laughs> I do not feel like I'm addicted to porn. Right. right. I can go days without watching it, but that's also because I have a busy life because I'll, I'm also very sexually active. I'm also, you know, doing a lot of things, you know, uh, so I don't have this type of my mind is not thinking just about that or about sex, because a lot of people could think uh, to be a porn, porn actor, you have to be a sex addict, which it's not true at all. Right. But I feel like because the problem is deeper than just I watch a lot of porn, so I'm addicted to porn. Like I think the work on that should be done, like to the base of that. And what makes them go so often and so much to porn, mm. you know, and what brings that negative impact? Like a lot of people, for example, don't go out. They are too shy to even talk to a women or they've been rejected so they feel like they cannot do get a woman or things like that which will send them to like an easier path thinking hey if i jerk off to porn then i don't have to go through all these things mm. um, unfortunately for these people that overuse porn and again like everything like if you overuse anything right and it has a negative impact you you should do something about it um the solution is not by say like to me i hate when people say and i'm not trying to defend porn uh, this is not what i'm trying to do but like 
it's not saying, well, you watching porn is bad. You should stop. It's just like, how can we fix that? And what will make you not go so often and working on that, like going mm -hmm. out, meeting people, uh, working on your confidence too. And, and that's where I think the, the, the we would make progress in. Yeah. Sorry, sometimes it's hard for me. No, don't be like sorry at all. We, uh, I, we both understand exactly if what you're trying makes, to say. If that makes sense. It made perfect right. sense. It made perfect sense. I, I think that, I love what you said, right? Because porn is like, I don't want to throw it in with like addiction to heroin, right? It's, mm -hmm. they're not the same. Like, yes. Know, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, but the effects that porn generate to the brain are the same. Are similar. the same, yes. It's similar, yeah. Right, so the point I was trying to, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, you can't just have a casual heroin user, right? I mean, you can, but you know, you don't recommend that, right? So it's like, you can't just go out there and be like, you know what, I'm just going to be using heroin every other Thursday or something like that, right? But what you're saying is like, listen, porn isn't to that extreme unless you use it four times a day to escape to something. But it could be a balance where you can watch porn, you can have that incorporated in your life, but also well, take care of your mentality. Uh, of course. Well, you yeah. could apply that to sports. Right. Same thing. You, uh, same effects to the brain. Uh, but if you overdo sports, it can have, you know, a real negative effect on your body and on you. Um, Very true. It's 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 more about the the how do you say that? It's more about knowing where the problems come from way before, you know, um, addiction to heroin or addiction to porn or addiction to any other, like alcohol, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's important to, uh, oh man, sorry. That's okay. It's, no. it's important to know what, started this what made you go yeah. that route yeah to fix it yeah i agree i mean as someone who works in the professional space but also hasn't drank alcohol in 16 years right like there are some people that can drink alcohol no problem and not be addicted and then there's some people who start drinking too much and then they learn how they have to learn how to balance it. And I think that's the same thing with porn right? and with anything. It's like yeah. it's learning the balance. Um, and I remember I was in my I was in my early 20s and this conversation of porn came up because I was around someone who was like, oh, my God, you know, this person watches porn. And if that were my husband, I would never be OK with it. And I yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I, I remember being at a young age and be like, why? why, 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 why wouldn't you want your husband to watch porn? What's the big deal about that? Um, it, it triggered the insecurities. That's right. where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. And why would someone be insecure about that? I mean, is it because... Well, the... we're human beings. Yeah. Religion. <laughs> <It's> every, <laughs> religion everything's religion. Too, but like, we're also human beings. Like, it, it, it's just we have insecurity. We doubt. We don't know if we're good. Or sometimes you know you're not good. So, you know, or maybe you don't look physically at all like the girls he's watching so right. like mm -hmm. it, you know yeah i do think porn like sometimes paints a picture for people of what sex should be like or like mm. sometimes like there's this pressure that a guy has to have a big dick or a guy has to have a thick dick or you know a woman's vagina needs to like look a certain way you have to last a very long time and so i do th i do see that sometimes being an issue but also like there are parents that never talk to their kids about this stuff and they want to go learn and again we talked about that Right, so it's like it can be yeah. helpful and educational, and also it can cause problems. Of course, of course, it's important to talk about it. You know, um, what was the conversation that you had with? The, did you meet your wife on set, or did you guys meet? Like, yes, actually, my really? actual wife. Yeah, she's we so met beautiful. On set, and what's uh, what's funny uh -huh. about it is, is that because she started as a performer. And uh, we were supposed to make a movie called Caden Loves Manuel, which is so weird now when we think about it. <laughs> and we had on that day zero chemistry. Like that was, wow. she was being very difficult that day on set. <laughs> uh, like really, like really, yeah. like, it, it, you know, 
I should have known back then. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but, but of course, she's yeah, she is very beautiful, and I was like super excited to film with her. But she was really, really difficult to the point that after that, I actually refused to work with her for three years oh, wow. before we had another scene together. You know, and um, and then you fell in love. And then a friend of mine who was a director uh, convinced me. He was like, you'll see, she's not like she used to be. She's different. So I was like, all right, I'll do it for you. Let's go. I did. And that went well. Wow. And then we started seeing each other. So, okay. So because it, it takes me back, right? Because you said that like when you're filming a scene, there's a line. And you yeah. come close to that line, but you never cross it. Did you cross it with her? Yeah, I did cross <laughs> it with her. Well, well, I didn't cross it with her right away because I was at that time in a relationship with the mother of my three boys. Mm. Rachel knows. She's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. And, Rachel, you know the whole family. Uh, well, they all go I, to jujitsu. I feel right, left right. out here. They're the best <laughs> I family. I know, I know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then we separated. Uh, we remained good friends. We just knew it was the end. You know, and we were like, that was the point where we were together because we had the boys together, but there was nothing else, right? So, like, we didn't want the boys to grow up in, with parents that are just neutral, like, that don't have that thing, mm. you know? So, it was a difficult uh, uh, decision to make, but once we made it, it worked out perfectly because to this day we're really good friends we hang out we do all the holidays everything together so mm. um that, that's awesome that, that's pretty good uh i lost my thought of no just your relationship with your with your current oh. wife and just how yeah, yeah. you blended it yeah and so it took time for us to start oh yeah how did i cross that line um and then because i was newly single i started seeing you know, I was single, so I started seeing different girls. And uh, I always had the rule where I wasn't spending the night. So either if I was going to the girl's place, uh, I wouldn't stay there. Or if the girl would come to my place, I made it very straightforward about not staying at my place. Mm -hmm. um, and I would drive them back or whatever. But, you know, I because I, I didn't want it to be anything else. I wasn't ready for a relationship after all, you know, after that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one time she came to my place and uh, when it was time to go, uh, I didn't want her to go. I wanted mm. her to stay. And she stayed. That's so sweet. And That's now I can't get rid of her. <laughs> no, I couldn't say anything sweet and not, you know, slice it of right course. behind. But it's, no, no, but it's the it's the man thing to do. I'm but a, <laughs> I'm a man's man, you know. There you, you go. I, mean. <laughs> I I have a question about. So you're also a girl dad. Yes. Okay. I'm a girl dad. <laughs> I'm a boy dad. A, a what? I'm a boy dad. You're, you're boy right. Okay. I'm a. Are you transitioning? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you becoming a man now i'm tired of eating okay. my boy mom. all right uh i see you find something up that's something new every day um what like how old is your daughter if you don't mind me asking she's nine nine what's your relationship like with your daughter oh man she's she owns everyone in our family <laughs> of course she does she is the cutest sweetest little being like I, I'm very blessed with my kids. Yeah. I have very good kids. They like seriously, they never misbehave. They are like always nice to people. They are very polite. They are like I can't like I don't think I could have wished for better kids like seriously. And my daughter like because she's the youngest, even my boys, even my boys are like all for her, right? Mm. So she's it's interesting because I, 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 um, because of your profession, because of your relationship with women, I do have, I have a, a, a deep sense that you're very respectful to women, right? And yes, of course. Right. Well, I, I don't know, if, I, I don't know if all porn stars are, or definitely well, not all men are. Different. What? 
we're humans. We're all different. We're all different. Exactly. Right. And so, but I sense that. And I, so I sense that your relationship also with your daughter would be an honest and open and respectful relationship as well. And so that, that's, that's kind of the direction that I was going. And I think that's, that's beautiful. That's very important, especially, you know, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, Manny, I know we started a a little late and I want to respect your time. So I, I have, I have a couple. Okay, I have a couple more questions. Um, you have a big family. You have a big career. How do you balance your professional life and your mental health and your physical well being? Like, how do you balance your whole the whole life of Manny Ferreira? What do you do? The, the way I balance it is not making my business everything. Mm. Uh, and you know, I've been doing this is for a long time and I've learned to manage my time very well. I also have people that work for me who are really good at what they do. And on the work side, I'm only present on set when I'm needed. Mm. So for example, if I'm performing that day, um, they're gonna do the whole work, get the girl ready, do the picture, everything. And then about 30 minutes before I'm needed there, they will text me and say, hey, we're about 30 and then I, you know, that's probably more or less what it would take me to drive to the location. And, uh, and then I show up and then when we're done with, uh, the set, I leave and they pack up and they do everything. You know, Mm. I set it up my, I set it up in that way where I spend very little time on set. Uh, to be honest, I'm probably, if I work 10 hours in the week, it's a, it's a week, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, which which is funny because a lot of people, they come to me, they're like, oh, you make so much money because of porn. Or you've been with so many girls before because of porn. It's all truth. It, it's, it's the truth. But the best thing about my industry and the way I set up my business is I have time. Mm. time to spend with my family time to ma- to do things that make me happy which is sports streaming on twitch and you know little time the like very little time working and that's incredible that's beautiful that's awesome what if a man can't get hard in a scene like do they use viagra so when i started in 1997 there was no viagra oh my god so either you could do it or you, or you couldn't do it. Wow. Which so th- explains which explains a lot why in the 90s, the male performers were maybe not as great looking as some of the guys now. But then Viagra came up and people started using Viagra, which I do not think people should use this to do porn. Mm. Okay? Either you can do it or you shouldn't do it. Because uh, Viagra is still a young drug and we don't know long term the effects that it can have on you also uh it's a mental thing right you start using viagra then you think you need it Mm. your brain will tell you well if you don't use viagra you won't get hard probably in your personal life too and then you don't want to be the guy that takes viagra every time he has to have sex that's ridiculous also there is a moment where if you do it a lot like male performers, your body will build tolerance to it. And then when it doesn't work anymore, uh, uh, also it's not 100% reliable. Like Mm -hmm. you still have to be turned on for it to work. But then after a while, when it doesn't work on your body anymore, you're going to try to look for other things. Like nowadays there are a lot of guys that use some type of injections and it's horrible. Like, Like no one should be using that if they don't need it and unless you uh, have real problem in your personal life and you use it once or a couple of times a month to satisfy your wife or things like that, no one should be use, using that. And l- even less performers who work every day and some of those guys use it every day and sometimes a couple of times a day. Same thing with the Viagra. After a while, your brain's going to tell you you can't do it without it. So you're going to do it more. You're going to do it in your personal life. And like the Viagra, after a while, your body will get used to it and it won't work as well. It's a huge problem nowadays because there are a lot of new guys that come in the industry 
and they meet people that tell them, hey, if you use that, it's going to be great for you. I don't recommend this to anyone. You shouldn't do it. It's like everything. If you can do it naturally, you should not be doing it at all. That's a, that's a, very, that's imagine, a very good point to a lot of things. That really is. <laughs> of course. And imagine, like we talk about mental health, imagine how it can mess your head up to do this on a regular basis. Like, like mm. it's. Have, have you ever, ha, did you meet Rocco Sofredi? Yes, he was. I, That's He was cool. actually like my mentor. Like, oh, really? He's the guy, like, r remember I told you in the beginning, I was only doing like small productions, right? Because I didn't want to be so exposed. Mm -hmm. And then right when I finished uh, school, I was about to become a PE teacher. I had to make a choice between one and another. And I met Rocco's cousin on a poem set and he saw me perform and he was like, dude, this is what you're meant to do. Like, I want to take you on my cousin's production and he's going to love you. And uh, I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I was all right, let's do it. I went to Prague and met Rocco, worked for Rocco. And he was like, he said the same. He was like, hey, listen, like, you don't understand, like, there, there are not a lot of guys like you in our industry, and this is what, this is your calling. This is what you're meant to be, <laughs> not a PE teacher. And he was right. That's crazy. Never regretted. I, I mean, growing up, I loved his videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a, the man, dude. Like, he's I, the, always, I feel like he's like the Michael Jordan but of But like, what, yes. what makes <laughs> someone... Right? He's Bruce Lee. I he's Bruce tell, Lee. Of, I always of, tell people, Ford. there's only one Bruce Lee. There's going to be like... Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Van Damme, whatever after him. Rocco like, Cifredi. Well but yeah. Rocco Cifredi, there yeah. will only be one guy. Is like he him. French or Italian? Italian. He's Italian. Okay. Ital he actually gave me the name Ferrara. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, what's your, do you mind me asking what's your name? Yeah, real? my real name is Jana. Jana. It's a very fresh, very French name. And That's my yeah, aunt's he, name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, you know, <laughs> I meant that. I mean, Jana is a common Russian yeah. name too. But what oh, makes someone a, a good performer? Like, like what? Well, it depends. It depends on, it's very subjective, right? Like, for example, I'm a very present performer in the scene. I'm very passionate. I love kissing. I love talking. I love touching. And I love creating, like, um, uh, chemistry with the female performer. For the viewers, a lot of people want to see that because they see that the girl is genuinely turned on and into what oh, she's yeah. doing. Mm. But then there are others for whom they don't like it because I'm too present in the scene, right? They rather have a guy that's more detached and see the penetration and the girl doing her thing. And almost they want to like, forget about the guy being in the scene. So some guys, they're going to like this type of performer that's more like detached. Have you ever, have you ever been walking down the street and a guy looks at you and you Hello. know he knows you oh, and then he looks away? Yeah, how do you, how do you yeah. deal with fans? Have you ever like, well, no, but, I feel like it's different. Like, I mean, please, can you answer that question? Yeah, yeah. I, I had, I have this all the time, and all the time, anywhere I go, like I get that. Like at jujitsu, um, some of them recognize me, and uh, one of the ladies that train at jujitsu, she actually, <laughs> she, you. she actually one day, well, before she asked me, she was training with my son, and she's like, I know your dad from somewhere. Like, <laughs> is he an actor? She knew, yeah. but uh, and she didn't that want to wasn't cross that line. That um, wasn't that was kind of weird that she went to my sixteen-year-old son yeah, to right. ask her that, right? Like, yeah, and then cool. one day after the class, I was sitting on the bench, and she sat next to me, and she's like, "Hey, I wanted to let you know that I'm a big fan of what you do," and I was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> thank you." You know, that's so interesting. Um, I don't mind it. Yeah, you know, uh, she did it. You know, the, the, when she went to my son, that bothered me, but I would have rather her come directly like she did, sure. you know. Uh, but I have no problem with, you know, I own what I do. I have no shame. I shouldn't, you know. I, 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 I got to give you I got to give you a compliment. I was watching a podcast and there was a I, I don't don't remember her name. Uh, she was on the podcast and, and the, they asked her what was like the best scene you've ever had in your entire life. And she, I think you know who I'm talking about. Manny and, Herrera. And she was like, 
she I don't think she hesitated. I think she just flat out mm-hmm. said, "Manny Ferreira, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ!" <laughs> look, uh, look, and she's a, a famous minute. porn star, by the way. I, oh, I, I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I, just, um, I don't remember her name. I her name is Angela White. Yes, but um, look, I made my business out of girls liking me. I know it sounds pretentious, but like when I came to LA. I came for a big movie. I worked with one girl, right? In that whole movie. That one girl went to tell all her friends, oh my God, girls from the industry, Mm -hmm. I work with this French guys. You guys have to work with it. Mm -hmm. And then some of those girls requested me to other companies. So I got contacted. Hey, this girl is asking to work with you. Can you work that day? And then I work with this girl and this girl goes to her, her other friends and That's say, crazy. oh, my God. Yeah. So that was the best business call possible is my way to do it, right? Mm. Like, uh, and and that's what works for me. And to this day, I'm almost 48 years old and I'm still, Damn, you dude, know. You look young, man. You don't look uh, That's because of, you know, the, the camera and the lighting. So, you know, you don't <laughs> the see. The makeup but that I'm, you put uh, on before the call? From close, <laughs> from very close. I mean, at jujitsu, you can see. yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, That's my awesome. the lines on my forehead for sure. Well, Manny, I, I so appreciate you coming on to the show today. Thank you're, you. You're just yeah. awesome. Yeah, I appreciate man. you. I appreciate your family. Truly, you're you're a thank wonderful you. human. I appreciate you too. Anywho, thank you everyone for joining us in the Got Mental Health podcast. If you haven't already, please rate, review our show. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, we always love getting back to you. And thank you so much for your support. Manny, pleasure meeting you, brother. My pleasure. Let, let's meet in person, yeah, man. man. Like, I mean, I don't know about jujitsu. jiu-jitsu. Do you play in, come do you, on. Do you, Dude, come on. Come Where do you on. Get, where's, where's your studio? It's fucking far from you. It's in Agora. Yeah, it's in but your daughter, you can get your daughter into it. Yeah, I come did on. want to get my it, daughter into jujitsu. Look, you, you, you start, you'll get addicted I know, to it's it. true. I like, guarantee. Right, fuck it. That's, yeah. I'll come, I'll come one day. One to Agora? Yeah. yeah. Re- oh, really? Do they, do they take kids to Yes, I'm taking back on Saturday. On Saturday. All right. Do it. Not with, not with the adults. It's separate classes, yeah, yeah, I, but I, I they do. Hope yeah. not. Um, all my <laughs> kids are in it. I'm my daughter in the kids' class. My what, twins. How, what age that. did you start your daughter? Uh, she's uh, she started last year. She's eight. Mm. She was so, eight. Now so, she's nine. So mine you is know. five. Is the thing is too. Oh young, yeah, or? they have they have in that same group. They have like five or five or six years old. Okay. little ones. Okay. Jackson starting. Very Saturday. good. Oh really? Yeah, it's very good him. teachers. Yeah. Right. Very, very good teachers. Hey, next time. So I just side note. I know you got to go. We just came back from Europe, and I told my mm. wife because we ha- we went to Barcelona as well, and we went with friends of ours who's from Barcelona. I was like yes. the greatest because I've been to Barcelona like eleven years ago, and it's no, it's so different than when you go with somebody who's of from course. there. Of so when you go back to France, you're, I'm coming with you. Because <laughs> Let's go. I was like, I'll I, be there wife, I need August. to make friends with people that are from the the because then you get the authentic experience and yes. like. So we're going I'll to be France there together, brother. End of August, early <laughs> September. So you're more than welcome. Oh well, maybe maybe we'll catch you up on that on it next year because we just came back. So <laughs> anytime. For sounds good, brother. Thanks, Thanks man. Manny. Appreciate your Thank time. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye, Take care, thank man. Bye, bye.